Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the course Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustion, Module 3 Thermodynamic Property Relations. Till this point of time, we have completed three lectures thermodynamic that um, functions and Maxwell equations. Lecture number 2 property relations for phase change processes. Uh, lecture number 3 is for property relations for single phase systems. We are now in the lecture number 4 which we are going to discuss today that is heat capacity equations and its applications. So, in this uh, lecture we will uh, touch upon the following components. First is the fundamental thermodynamic equations what we have studied so far we are going to summarize them. Then uh, we will move on to another important equations or relations which is known as uh, TDS uh, uh, equations as well as heat capacity equations. Then we are trying to use this heat capacity equations for certain situations uh, and two situations we are going to discuss one is for reversible isothermal change of pressure second one is the reversible adiabatic change of pressures. Now, let us uh, move to the uh, topic of our discussions that is the first segment the uh, fundamental thermodynamic equations. So, till this point of time we know that the classical mathematical concepts has been used to obtain 16 thermodynamic property relations that includes Maxwell equations and all these equations use the concept of uh, exact differentials. Then we try to apply these uh, equations for pure substances that accompany phase change process. So, there we derived Clapeyron equations and Clausius Clapeyron equations. Now, when we apply these uh, relations for a single phase regions in which uh, we require at least two uh, state coordinates uh, out of pressure, volume and temperatures and the most appropriate choice among these three are either temperature volume or temperature pressure. Then based on this uh, we obtain uh, one relations in which the properties u and s u s at p are regarded as a function of temperature and volume other relations we framed for temperature and pressures. And ultimately uh, we uh, told that all properties of interest for a pure substance uh, can be determined as a functional form from the major data through uh, major data which are pressure specific volume and temperatures and we can find the other derived properties using this uh, relations. Now, let us understand what are those relations. First 16 relations that comes as a basic relations, Maxwell's equa uh, equations and some additional relations. So, these three category called as 16 real thermodynamic relations among the properties. Okay. Now, apart from that, so these are derived through our uh, uh, concept of exact differential equation. Okay. Now, when these uh, relations are applied for phase change process, we get Clapeyron equations and Clapeyron, uh, Clausius Clapeyron equations. And this Clausius Clapeyron uh, equations assumes the uh, substance to be when you deal with uh, the, the change of uh, uh, situations or state at in a gaseous medium, uh, we can assume this situation to be a uh, equation to be constant uh, what is called as equation of state P B is equal to R T. Then this is about the 
these two relations are for phase change process. Now, for a single phase systems, we derived the relations for uh, uh, the mainly the specific uh, heat at constant volume and specific heat at constant pressure as a function of the entropy and internal energy. And also we found the internal energy equations from these relations. Okay. Now, let us understand the next important segment at what we call as heat capacity equations. Many a times we all aware that the specific heat is one of the fundamental concept and we see that specific heat means amount of energy required to change the temperature by unit deg degree Kelvin or centigrade. Now, uh, uh, we found that for uh, substances like solid and um, uh, liquid, we have one specific heat, but we specific heat uh, for gases can have uh, two, one is specific heat at constant pressure and specific heat at constant volume, because they follow the ideal equation gas equation of states, where the um, change of state can happen through either at constant pressure or at constant volume. But what happens is that uh, most of the laboratory experiments when you define the specific heat capacity normally uh, it is done at constant pressure. So, in fact, when you tell that uh, a specific heat of water by default it is assumed that the we get the data uh, when by keeping the pressure constant. And uh, uh, these laboratory data are reported, but uh, uh, what happens that when you uh, go for the specific uh, to find out the specific heat at constant volume, we uh, uh, normally ignore it, because it is very difficult to maintain constant volume while, uh, while changing the uh, temperature. So, there are experimental difficulties are uh, involved. Now, because of these reasons, so it is uh, required that we should also formulate the expressions in which we can find out the specific heat at constant volume mathematically for pure substances. So, this is the importance of these uh, uh, relations. Now, apart from that we will be also uh, using the some other important properties which what we call as isothermal compressibility. In fact, we have uh, already discussed about this in our previous lectures and this isothermal compressibility is defined by the term kappa that is equal to minus 1 by V into dou V by dou P at constant temperatures. Other uh, parameter is volume expansivity or coefficient of volume expansion beta which is equal to 1 by V dou V by dou T at constant pressure. Okay. Now, having said all these things, let us try to see that how we can get the heat capacity equations. By heat capacity equations, we assume that uh, we are looking at uh, specific heats at constant volume and constant pressures. Now, from our previous uh, relations, we can recall there are two important equations. One is d s is equal to C b by T d T plus dou P by dou T at constant V into d V. Other equation is d s is equal to C p by T d T minus dou V by dou T at constant P d P. In fact, this is one of the relations which I have noted in the earlier slide. Now, uh, what you do is the from these two expressions, if you subtract that means, if you find C p minus C v into d t that means, if you subtract d s will get cancelled. So, C p minus C v d t would be t times dou p by dou t v d v plus t dou v by dou t at uh, d p. Now, uh, at this stage we see that 
uh, we have seen that it is a temperature right left hand side is the temperature right hand side is wall specific volume and pressure. So, we can uh, uh, to get all these relations we, we assume that or we can say that if you say pressure is a function of temperature and specific volume then we can find the expression of d p. Now, why do we require because we want to get rid of this d p. So, if you calculate this so exact differential of pressure d p from this equations can be obtained as dou p by dou v at constant t into d v plus dou p by dou t at constant v into d t. Now, when I substitute this d p in this equations then we get C p minus C v into d t and plus d t dou p by dou t at v d v plus t dou v by dou t at p then d dou p by dou v at t into d, d v. And last expression is t into dou v by dou t p uh, dou p by dou t v d t. Then what you do? You simplify these equations. So, after simplifications we find these relations. So, right hand side of this equations contains only specific volume and left hand side of the equations contains the change in the temperature T. So, mention we have already mentioned that temperature and volume can be varied independently so that uh, by keeping other as constant. So, if you look at these equations if you say there is no change in the temperature, but uh, if you say uh, temperature change is not equal to 0, but specific volume change is equal to 0. That means, the in a situation the specific volume does not change, but temperature changes. So, we get one expression C p minus C v is equal to T times dou v by dou t at p into dou p by dou t at v. This is first expression. Second expression we can find out if d v is not equal to 0 and d t is equal to 0 then we can find out this d p by d t from this equations at constant v will be equal to minus dou v by dou t p into dou p by dou v at t. Then we arrive at by substituting this d p by d t in this equations then we get the expressions for C p minus C v is equal to minus t dou v by dou t p square into dou p by dou v at constant temperatures. Now, here if I recall the kappa as 1 by v dou v by dou p at constant t and beta to be 1 by v dou v by dou t at constant p. So, we can find uh, find that C p by C v C p minus C v is equal to v times T beta square by kappa. Okay. So, uh, so, basically the uh, change in the specific heat is expressed in terms of isothermal compressibility and uh, kappa. Now, let us find out the some important uh, consequences, but before I said this this equation C p by C v C p minus C v is equal to v times T beta square by k is often referred as Mayer equation. Now, what is the significance of Mayer equations? Let us find out the important consequence. First thing, so if I say this relation C p minus C v is this v times T beta square by kappa. Now, uh, if here we have assumed that we, we have and this relation is true for all the uh, states of the substance say solid, liquid and gas phase. Now, if I say in a situation that if you if your substance is an ideal gas where P v is equal to R t equation is valid, then we can find out dou p by dou v at constant t will be minus R t by v square and dou v by dou t at constant p will be R by p. Now, when I put this expressions in the above relations, so C p minus C v stands as minus T R by P whole square or R by P into R by P and minus R T by V square. So, after simplifications we come across that C p minus C v is equal to R, 
R is nothing but the characteristics gas constant. So, here I need to emphasize that we all aware of this expressions C p minus C v is equal to R for an ideal gas, but this is the mathematical proof that how we get this C p minus C v is equal to R for an ideal gas. Now, in the second case that is case 2, uh, uh, we are trying to prove that C p is always greater than C v. Why? Because the term beta square is always positive even if uh, is always positive because it is a square quantity, absolute temperature is positive and specific volume is also uh, a positive number. So, uh, this says that uh, uh, and, and in fact uh, more importantly that kappa is positive for all substances in all phases. This is an experimental evidence and because of this reason we say that C p minus C v is greater than 0. So, or C p is greater than C v which means specific heat at constant pressure is always higher than the specific heat at constant volume. And third important consequence we, consequence we can derive that when the temperature T goes to 0 then it is uh, it the equation says that C p minus C v is equal to 0 or C p is equal to C v. What it means that at absolute 0 temperatures uh, we do not have separate specific heat we have uh, unique specific heats and because both C p and C v merge. And last important inference we can say that when d v by d t at constant p goes to 0, when d v by d t at constant p goes to 0, then only C p will be equal to C v and this is uh, uh, this and this is true, this relation is true d p by d, d, d v by d t at constant p goes to 0 for solids and liquids. Okay. And so, because of this reason, we say C p is equal to C v. One simple example uh, says that when you say water at 4 degree centigrade, the density of water is maximum and, uh, and at that situation this tends to 0. So, this is all about the uh, difference between C p and C v. Now, another important term we all aware that uh, we call this as a specific heat ratio C p by C v. Uh, C p by C v as is equal to gamma. This ratio we are trying to express in the form of uh, in the form of isothermal compressibility to isentropy compressibility for the pure substance. Let us see how we are going to do that that is first thing. Second important relations about this specific heat ratio is that this is has a this has a definite bearing with a property parameter which is known as speed of sound. In fact, speed of sound is a function of specific heat ratio for an ideal gas, we all know it. Now, let us see how we are going to get all, all these expressions. So, again here the first fundamental two equations we need to recall is the TDS equations d s is equal to C v by T. Uh, d t plus dou p by dou t at constant v and d s is equal to uh, C p uh, by t d t minus dou v by dou t at constant p into d p. So, uh, at constant entropy that means, d s is equal to 0. So, we get uh, one relation C p in the uh, for C p d t other relation you get C v d t. Then obviously, you need to find out the specific heat ratio then you take this ratio. Now, when you take this ratio of course, dou v by dou t term is here and dou p by to, dou v by dou t at constant volume term is here and here this uh, uh, ordinary differential d p and d v they becomes partial differential. Why do you say? Because that point of time we say it is happening this equation is true for constant entropy. So, that is what we say dou p by dou v at constant entropy. So, then when you have this 
then C p by C v ratio becomes dou p by dou v at constant s divided by dou p by dou v at constant t. Here we can see that entire relations between p v t and it is a cyclic relations and this term minus dou v by dou t at constant p divided by dou p by dou t at constant v comes to this expression because uh, b p v t they are in cyclic they have we have uh, used the cyclic mathematical relation. Okay. So, once you have this then from these equations we say that dou p by dou v at constant s is equal to dou p by dou v at constant t into C p by C v. Now, we have to, uh, arrived at uh, these expressions. We are now going to recall the equations kappa that is uh, isothermal compressibility and isentropic compressibility alpha. So, uh, from this these two equations we can uh, also find out that when you put this equations here the C p by C v relations is equal to kappa by alpha. How? Uh, then what you do C p by C v is equal to uh, dou p by dou v at constant at s. So, this information will get from alpha and dou p by dou v at constant t will get this information from kappa. So, by putting this we get this relation C p by C, C v kappa by alpha. Okay. Uh, again we say for an ideal gas P v is equal to R t. So, we can say P is equal to uh, dou p by dou v at constant t is equal to minus R t by v square. So, this equation we are going to use. Then next target was the how to find the another important property what we call as speed of sound. So, speed of sound c is defined uh, from its definition is that it is dou p by dou rho at constant s. Now, the now rho is equal to 1 by specific volume, then the speed of sound is then expressed as minus v square uh, dou p by dou v at constant s. Now, dou p by dou v expression you can get from alpha. So, we can say minus v square into minus 1 by alpha times v. So, after simplifying then we can get speed of sound is equal to square root of C p by C v into v by alpha v by kappa. So, v by alpha uh, the C p uh, and dou p by dou v at constant s we can found out from here. Then from this we say that speed of sound is C is equal to square root of C p by C v into v by kappa. Okay. And for an ideal gas equations this particular expression further gets simplified by considering this equations p is equal to r t by v and also dou p by dou v at constant s is equal to d p by d v at constant t into C p by C v. Ultimately, C becomes square root of C p by C v into R t. Okay. Now, we will uh, move on to next important two equations that is T d s equations and we will find what are its important significance. In fact, when you talk about T d s equations we already know these equations, but it has to be interpreted in a different form and why we want to go for a different form because uh, we are going to apply these equations for two situations one is reversible isothermal change in the pressure other is reversible adiabatic change in the pressures. Uh, we will see the in the first category that is reversible isothermal change in the pressure or at constant temperature we will note down that dependence of specific volume and uh, uh, coefficient of uh, uh, volume expansion is insensitive to uh, pressures for solids and liquids. Other important point we are going to note that the pressure uh, when the pressure increases isothermally heat flows out 
that means heat comes out uh, and for the substances for which beta is positive and then for substances with negative value of beta uh, we will see that isothermal increase in the pressure will cause heat absorption. The other important consequence we will guess find out is that isothermal compressibility is insensitive to the change in the pressure and it is always a positive quantity and because of these reasons uh, this has linked with respect to work transfer and this work transfer will be negative because it will be a compression situation. Now, when the pressure increases uh, uh, isothermally uh, the combined effect of the heat and work will have impact on internal energy. This internal energy is going to be increased. Now, when it uh, when heat is absorbed negative beta and uh, internal energy will drop when the heat is liberated. Now, these consequence let us see that how we are going to prove mathematically. So, we will see you can recall uh, this TDS equations. TDS. Uh, in fact, here for the year we will talk about the TDS equations in terms of pressures. So, we say we uh, will use this equation ds is equal to Cp by T dt minus dou V by dou T at constant P into dp. Now, reversible isothermal change of pressure will lead to the fact this term will go to 0. So, we can say at constant T we can write this equations as T d s is equal to minus T dou V by dou T at constant P into d P. So, when you if when you say T d s it re refers to heat transfer Q which is equal to T times integral of dou V by dou T at P into d P. Now, this d dou V by dou P uh, dou V by dou T at constant P we can find out from the expressions which is beta and so that we can write this q as integral of beta v dp. So, t can come out and for many substances if you say this uh, q is a function of dp only. So, t beta v comes out. So, it becomes p f minus p i. So, q is equal to uh, t beta times v p f minus p i. Now, when the final pressure is much much higher than the initial pressure, then this expression reduces to a simple one q is equal to minus t times beta v into p f. Now, this is about the heat transfer. Now, for work transfer we have to recall the expression for kappa, where uh, uh, which we will talk about work transfer is integral of p d v d v information will get from this kappa. So, uh, now after simplifying this uh, we can write this work transfer w uh, is equal to half kappa times b into p f square minus p i square. Now, when p i is less much much less than p f. So, you can see what is the work transfer w is equal to half kappa v times p f square. So, in the information of q 1 w one can find out also internal energy. The second case which we are going to study what is the uh, uh, effect of reversible adiabatic change of pressure for pure substance. Uh, so, in a the word uh, reversible adiabatic means it is an isentropic process. So, entropy remains constant and here the uh, inferences that we are going to get is that increase in the pressure will cause very negligible change in the temperature for solids and liquids and Cp will be invariably constant. Reversible adiabatic change in the pressure will produce increase in the temperature for pure substance which has positive beta and it decreases in temperature for negative values of beta. So, here also we recall the same equations d s c is equal to C p by T d T minus dou V by dou T at constant P into d P. Now, when I say uh, adiabatic change of pressure, so entropy becomes 0, d s becomes 0, not entropy, change in the entropy is 0. 
Uh, so, from this expressions we can get C p by t uh, or you can say d t is equal to t by C p dou v by dou t at constant p into d p. Now, this dou v by dou t at constant p information will get from the value beta. So, uh, uh, after putting this we get the cha uh, uh, temperature change when there is a increase in the pressure and the uh, and this happens when at constant entropy. So, uh, the rise in the temperature uh, for the pure substance can be expressed at the as a function of uh, as is equal to T into beta V by C p into P f minus P i and when this P i is much much less than P f we will see that uh, uh, the delta T becomes T beta V y C p into P f. Okay. So, this is all about the um, contents for the lecture uh, lecture today. Now, we will try based on the uh, content uh, we have discussed we are uh, going to solve some simple numerical problems and here it I say simple because all the expressions we have already has been derived in this previous slides. So, I will note down this uh, expressions directly. So, intended audience you can please refer the slides for the derivation of the equations. So, the first problem talks about uh, the, uh, the last two segment of our discussions reversible when there is a uh, when the when the pressure is increased in a reversible isothermal manner for a pure substance and uh, when the pressure is increased in the isentropic manner. So, we have a the, the problem that is given we have 2 centimeter cube mercury which is available to us as 25 degree centigrade. So, you have this mercury in a container and it is volume is 2 centimeter cube and it is temperature is 25 degree centigrade and this is available to us and we need to find out uh, and, and uh, this pressure is increased to 1000 bar. So, final pressure becomes 1000 bar. Okay. So, we need to find out through this change, it change in the pressure what happens to Q and what happens to W. So, so first thing we can uh, say that uh, based on our understanding or assumption when his work is done by the system it is taken as positive when, uh, when heat is uh, added to the system it is also treated as positive. Okay. So, based on the data we have for mercury we have the data beta and kappa. What is we need to require? We need to find out q, w and delta e. So, this is a case where pressure is increased in a reversible and isothermal manner. So, we can recall our expressions uh, derived in the previous slides q is equal to t times v beta into p f. Okay. So, here t is 25 degree centigrade that is 298 Kelvin uh, v is given as 2 centimeter q And, and that is 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 meter cube beta is given kappa is given and p f p f is 1000 bar. So, you can write it as 1000 1000 into 101325 newton per meter square. So, by inserting this value we get q is equal to and here it is minus t is 298 
into 2 into 10 to the power minus 5 beta is 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 4 p f is 101325 into 1000 and this one uh, after simplifications we get q as minus 108.7 joule okay and since this is negative we say that heat is absorbed and second expression we can use this w as uh, minus half b kappa into p f square. So, all these numbers are given by inserting these values we can say w would be minus 4.1 joule which means work is done on this system that is also true because we are increasing the pressure and this uh, difference this uh, from this we can get delta e as uh, uh, summation of these two is mi uh, -112.8 joule so this means internal energy is goes into the systems that is increases increase in temperature ok. So, this uh, of course, these numbers q delta i are very small uh, with respect to uh, quantification of increase in the pressure by 1000 bar. Uh, so, it means that uh, mercury is very insensitive to these changes. In fact, this is also clear from the values of beta and kappa uh, defined for mercury. And uh, next uh, problem is in relation with the first problem, but here the association was uh, reversible and adiabatic manner uh, the pressure is increased. So, same mercury we may have this mercury in a container and this container is insulated. So, Q is equal to 0, pressure goes to uh, 1000 bar and its initial pressure P i is atmospheric 10 to the 5 Pascal and all other numbers uh, given that specific volume C p beta and kappa. So, we want to find out the change in the temperatures. So, let us see the first part of the problem A where we derive this expression change in the temperature is equal to T times specific volume beta divided by C p into P f all these numbers are given T is 25 degree centigrade that is 293 Kelvin and uh, beta is given specific volume is given C p is also given and P f is uh, 1000 bar that has to be expressed in terms of uh, uh, SI unit in terms of Newton per meter square. So, we will have to insert this value where we can say delta T will be 298 into 7.4 into 10 to the power minus 5, beta will be 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 4 divided by 0 0.15 into uh, 1.01 into 10 to the power 8 ok because you have this is in the kilojoule. So, delta T we can find out as 
2.67 Kelvin. We say that mercury is very insensitive to this change in the pressure. Although we have increased the pressure by 1000 bar, but hardly temperature change is recorded as about 2, 2 degree Kelvin. And second part again we say that when the volume is kept constant and temperature is raised by uh, 10 degree centigrade. So, for that we have not derived this uh, relations which we are going to do now. So, we can say if P is equal to function of temperature and volume then we can find out d p is equal to dou p by dou t at constant volume d v t t plus dou p by dou v at t into d v. So, here we say keeping volume constant. So, this term goes to 0 and this information we require. So, for that we have to recall beta is equal to 1 by v dv by dt at constant p kappa will be minus 1 by v dv by dp at constant t. So, from this relations we can find out dp. Now, if you say cyclic relation between P, V and T. Then from this we can get D P by D T at constant V will be equal to beta by kappa. So, from this we can say delta P will be equal to beta by kappa into T f minus T i. T i is already given 293, beta is uh, um, uh, given, kappa is given. So, from this we can find out and delta p is equal to P f minus P i and P i is uh, P i is 10 to the power 5 uh, from and, and from this we say uh, delta p is p f minus p i and from this we can find out final pressure would be about 452 bar. So, which what it says is that if the temperature of mercury is raised by 10 degree centigrade keeping volume constant we require 452 bar for this change in the temperature. That is because this value of beta and uh, kappa value is very less. That means, mercury is uh, typically insensitive. And the last problem that we are going to discuss is about the relation between C p and C b. So, the problem says that what is uh, the error in C v for water? I mean, why you are considering water at 1 atmosphere and 20 degree centigrade if C p is equal to C v is assumed. Now, whether this, log this is logical or not? So, this you have to find out. Second part of this problem is uh, we have to find out this specific speed of sound as a function of specific heat ratio. So, the relations that uh, we have to recall is first relation is C p minus C v relation. So, we recall C p minus C v is equal to V t beta square by kappa. Okay. Now, what you do not uh, know is we know beta and kappa and at 20 degree centigrade what we know is rho that is 998 kg per meter cube and rho is nothing but 1 by specific volume. 
and also at 20 degree centigrade we know that what is the Cp for water 4.188 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Okay, so these two information you know and T is 20 degree centigrade that is 293 Kelvin. Now, when I put this number then we can say Cp minus Cb is equal to 1 by 998.2 T is 293 beta that is 0 0.2 into 10 to the power minus 3 whole square kappa kappa is in the in the bar so we need to find out we need to express in terms of uh, newton per meter squares so we have to multiply 101.325 divided by 49.6 into 10 to the power minus 6 so after simplifications we get cp minus cv is equal to 0 0.024 kelvin so you already at the data cp so this will give you cv value as 4.164 kilojoule per kg kelvin so the question arises that what is the percentage of error in cv so we can now say cp minus cv by CV ratio if you want to find out into 100 then we can say this is 0 0.024 divided by 4.164 into 100 that is equal to 0 0.5 percent. So basically if you assume CP is equal to CV we will land up in 0 0.5 percent error. So it is by default we say Cp is approximately equal to Cv and that value is assumed it as a 4.188 kilojoule per kg Kelvin and this is taken the experimental data which is recorded at constant pressure. So, this is the first part of the problem. Second part of the problem is very simple. I have already derive the relations for uh, sp uh, speed of sound c and this is no equal to square root of cp by cv into v by kappa so these relations were already derived in the earlier slide so you just have to insert the data that is cp is 4.188 CV is 4.164, specific volume is 1 by 998.2, kappa is 1 by that is 101325 divided by uh, divided by this number 49.6. Into 10 to the power minus 6 entire square root. So ultimately we will get speed of sound is 1434 meter per second. The speed of sound and that is in the for the water in the water medium. So with this uh, I conclude the lecture for the today. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.